Emails go to talk at LarsLarson.com. You know, the government at almost every single level, from the federal level all the way down to the local city or county commission, they spend the money. And they spend a lot of it on promoting themselves. And the man who's actually assembled this amazing story is Adam Angievsky, who's been with us before. He's a Forbes contributor, an entrepreneur, and the founder and CEO of OpenTheBooks.com, the world's largest private repository of government spending. Adam, it's good to have you back on the program. How much is it the state of Oregon spends on promoting itself? Well, the state, uh, Oregon state government, we found on an oversight investigation that we just published at Forbes, spent nearly $300 million on self-promotion and PR, and we call it a machine, Lars. 300, almost $300 million over a, what, a four- or five-year period? Uh, so the $300 million was spent over a five-year period. It was 87 state agencies spent $278 million dollars to convince all of us citizens to spend more taxpayer money or gambling dollars on bigger government, higher taxes, more regulation, or more gambling from 2012 through 2016, so five years. So if I've done my math right, it works out to about $60 million a year or over a million dollars a week on self-promotion. It's a tremendous amount of money. Uh, so uh, since 2012, for instance, Taxpayers paid $110 million to employ 303 public affairs employees, spokespeople, advertising uh, state employees on video, web, print, graphic designers, marketing, and, and communication managers. But that even wasn't enough. The state shelled out an additional $168 million to outside PR and advertising firms. So in other words, if they were to shut down a lot of this activity... Uh, and and simply divert the money back to the needs of the people in the state, you could spend more money on parks or on roads or on jails or on cops or a hundred other things that are directly related to serving the public. Instead, this serves so that the, the governor or members of the legislature or members of state agencies can have somebody to write press releases, hold press conferences, answer questions from reporters and the like. And, and 303 uh, public affairs employees and spokespeople and all the rest of those, that's a tremendous cost to taxpayers at $110 million over the course of the past five years. Uh, but these, we delved inside the advertising uh, firms that got contracts from the agencies, and we just found crazy stupid fees for up to $260 per hour. And one company uh, uh, engaged at the Oregon Lottery, they actually reaped total payouts of $34 million. They had six employees that they got to bill at over $200 an hour, and that's on a 40-hour work week on a year, that's $400,000 per employee per year. Yeah, and what's, what seems crazy to me about that is you're helping to promote gambling. I don't mind gambling. I don't mind if I, people spend their own money. I occasionally play blackjack, but not for very much. But this is a state which, to some extent, opposes private sector gambling, has even opposed gambling by some of the Indian tribes or setting up of casinos. But when it comes to making money for them, they don't mind spending tens of millions of dollars to promote gambling by citizens, some of whom can afford it, some cannot, so that the state can get more money into its coffers. Well, the bloated lottery contracts are even more problematic because... Um, a portion of that lottery money is supposed to fund economic development. So if you're paying out extra money to the advertising vendor, they're even paying hundreds of hundreds of thousands of dollars in commissions to these vendors. Uh, then you're taking away dollars that should be going in to legitimate uh, uh, public service projects that the supposed to fund. See, I understand that some people are going to say, well, don't all enterprises advertise? And my answer would be, well, private enterprises advertise because they have a profit motive. But who said it was the, the state's job or the government's job to go out and promote an activity like gambling simply because it puts money in the pockets of the state? You know, they could just as easily promote, I don't know, visiting state parks or, you know, uh, kids getting good grades in school or going to school every day. But it sounds like they spend more money on promoting gambling than they do on promoting anything else that the uh, the, the government does. 
So we uh, we took a look at a uh, so so a different vendor that the lottery contracts with. They have only billed out at one hundred and fifty dollars an hour. So there's quite a difference between the contracts. We took a look at Travel Oregon, um, and Travel Oregon is one of the least transparent agencies in the entire state. We couldn't when we started this process before we started our hard audit of them, we could not get salary information. We, their contracts are not online. Their checkbook of their agency is not online. Like, um, we've captured all of this in Oregon state government at every other level, and your listening audience can see that at openthebooks.com. But we found that their principal advertising agency, Wyden, uh, Wyden Kennedy, uh, they turned a $7 million contract with only one, with a provision for only one two-year extension, they turned that contract into a $23 million contract, and lo and behold, it didn't have one extension, it had two. And I'm calling on the state auditor, Richardson, the Secretary of State, to take a look at this situation. There are millions of dollars at stake here. Listen, I'll tell you something, Adam. Over the years as a reporter, I've interacted with some of these PR people that work for the various public agencies, and I would, I would allow that in some cases it makes sense to have one go-to person at, say, the police agencies. So that when you want to call somebody at 2 in the morning as a reporter and say there was a murder overnight, we'd like to find out about it, that you might have a need for some. But 303 public affairs employees, the governor has three of them. And most of what they do is tell reporters that the governor won't talk about things. And, and in many cases, the uh, public spokespeople who are paid to do that job, they don't talk to reporters either. So if, if someone thinks, well, you know, a public agency, a big enough one, like the president has, a, you know, he has a whole department that's a communications department, and he has several people who will step up to that podium every day, uh, like Sarah Huckabee Sanders and, and, and uh, Sean Spicer and others who, who represent, but he's the president of the United States. Does a governor really need three people to speak for her? Isn't she capable of speaking for herself or perhaps having, having her chief of staff come out and talk to reporters when there's an important issue? Uh, to be weighed in on? Do they really have to employ the number of spokespeople that they have? Well, you're, you're exactly right, Lars. And as a matter of fact, there is a legitimate public purpose in government providing basic information to citizens about city services and rules of the road and, and all the different things that go into a legitimate um, PR campaign for state services. But what we show is it's just out of control. As a matter of fact, in our article at Forbes, and everybody in your, your listening audience, if you Google uh, Oregon Forbes PR, it comes right up. I encourage you all to read the, read the article that we put together, the Oversight Report. We, uh, we show that Governor Kate Brown... Uh, in her zest to make Oregon um, the uh, environmental regulations the most stringent in the country, she has used the, her PR apparatus against rural Oregon manufacturers uh, to target those manufacturers, even though they are in compliance with all current state and federal regulations on the environment. So this shows the troubling and and uh, uh, troubling power. Uh, of how the PR apparatus can be used against the private sector. If you want to read about it, you've got to see Adam Angievsky's piece in Forbes. It talks about the $278 million, just shy of $300 million, spent over a five-year period by the government agencies in just one state to go, after, to go out and, from my point of view, to spin a number of stories. Adam, it's a pleasure, as always, to have you on the program. Thanks so much. Lars, thank you for your interest in our work. Glad to have you on. Adam Angievsky. We'll be back in just a moment. You want to weigh in? It's 866-439-5277. Emails go to talk at LarsLarson.com.